Shania Nicole Davis was born in Cumberland County, North Carolina on 14 June 2004 to parents Bradley W. Lockhart and Antoinette Davis. Shania was a happy, loving and friendly little girl and was a good little helper around the house. She loved to play dress up and do girly things, playing with her Barbie dolls and styling their hair. She also enjoyed playing outside and riding her scooter around her neighborhood. Pink and yellow were her favorite colors. Shania was a popular child and was loved by students and teacher alike, at Morganton Road Elementary School, where she was a kindergarten student. At around 6 a.m. on November 10, 2009, a seemingly frantic Antoinette Davis woke her sister Brenda and Brenda's boyfriend, Jeroy Smith, to tell them that Shania was missing from her bed, where they lived at Sleepy Hollow Mobile Home Park, Fayetteville, North Carolina. For some reason, however, she was hesitant to call the police. It took Brenda nearly an hour of urging for Antoinette to make the call. Reluctantly, Antoinette made the call to police to report her five-year-old daughter missing. Antoinette reported that the night previous, she had lay Shania down to bed, but when she had entered her room to wake her the next morning, she was nowhere in the home. Police raced to the home and felt that foul play was very likely from the start. Their theory was that someone has snuck into the Davis home during the night and snatched Shania from her bed whilst she slept. The search for Shania began instantly and the following day, police issued an amber alert for Shania. It was then, that hotel employees at a Sanford hotel, located around an hour away from Shania's home, recognized Shania. Police managed to obtain CCTV footage from the hotel, and found a recording that showed Shania being carried by an unknown man. The footage showed the pair near the elevators, about to head up to the man's room. Roughly an hour and a half later, they were seen again on security footage. The man was carrying her out of the hotel. Screenshots taken from the security footage were released to the public in an attempt to identify the man shown. It appeared that the police had been correct in their theory that Shania had been taken during the night by an intruder. However, it would soon become clear that things were a lot worse than first imagined. On the 13th of November, a man would come forward to police to identify himself as being the man in the footage carrying Shania. He was Mario Andret McNeil, Brenda's ex-boyfriend. Despite turning himself over to police, he refused to speak about the situation. The following day, however, he would reveal the disturbing truth. He told the police that Antoinette had fallen into some drug debt with him. She didn't have any money and so Mario offered for her to pay off her debt in another way. With sexual favors. Antoinette agreed, however it wouldn't be her that would be selling. In fact, she decided to give Mario her five-year-old daughter Shania as payment for her drug debts and to this, Mario agreed. As if this wasn't unbearable enough to think about, it was later revealed that the so-called substantial amount of the debt was just $200. Antoinette had sold her five-year-old daughter to be a sex slave for $200. When asked what he had done with Shania and whether she was still alive, Mario remarked that he didn't remember where exactly he had left Shania but stated that she was dead. He said that he left her somewhere along Route 87 between Spring Lake and Stanford, near some green portable toilets. Police quickly found the area and began a massive search. Just six days later, Shania's little body was found in an overgrown field on the Lee Harnett County line at the side of the road. An autopsy determined that she had been sexually assaulted and suffocated. Antoinette was taken in for questioning and broke down in front of investigators, saying, I gave her to him to cover $200. He was only supposed to have sex. It was determined that on the night of November 9, Mario McNeil had been at home with his girlfriend and young child. He had taken cocaine and drank liquor all evening, before deciding to start texting women in his phone, hoping for sex. Eventually, this led him to text his ex, Brenda Davis. She didn't respond to him as her phone was turned off, but another woman who happened to live in the same trailer park did. McNeil made his way to the Sleepy Hollow Mobile Home Park, but the woman who responded to him had fallen asleep. Once more, he tried to text Brenda Davis. Again, she didn't answer. It didn't matter, though. McNeil knew how to get into the trailer where she had lived with her boyfriend, Antoinette, Shania and Shania's half-brother. Around 5.30 a.m. on November 10, Brenda Davis and Jeroy Smith woke to what sounded like someone trying to break into their mobile home. The sound stopped, but as the two were drifting off to sleep, Brenda's sister Antoinette burst into their room and told them her daughter Shania was missing. While Antoinette went outside to look for Shania, 
Her son told Brenda Davis and Smith that he had seen someone else in the home shortly beforehand. Antoinette, who was 29 years old and pregnant again, was arrested and charged. When she gave birth to the child, it was taken from her and put into foster care. She faced her own litany of charges, ultimately entering Alfred pleas, not pleading guilty, but admitting that the state has adequate evidence to convict her, to second-degree murder, human trafficking, conspiracy, kidnapping, sexual offense, sexual servitude, and taking indecent liberties with a minor. It was determined that she will spend at least 17 years in prison and will have to be registered as a sex offender for at least 30. Antoinette apologized to Shania's father Bradley in court, saying she had been too proud to let his family care for their daughter. Antoinette read a statement in court that said, I want to say I did the best I could with my children, she said. I never said I was a perfect mother, but I was a good mother. I did what I had to provide for them. I did what I had to, to make sure they were all right. I didn't have any help from anybody. In response, Superior Court Judge Jim Ammons told her, you could have saved your daughter's life, and you did not. You had the time, the opportunity and the means to save Shania's life, and you did not. You are not a good mother. Bradley has since stated that he forgave Antoinette a long time ago and that he knows Shania did as well. 32-year-old Mario Andret McNeil was ultimately convicted, in May 2013, of kidnapping, murder, human trafficking, sexual servitude, taking indecent liberties with a minor, and sex offense of a child by an adult offender. He was sentenced to death. More than 2,000 people attended the funeral of the five-year-old girl who was so badly let down by the one person she should have been able to trust. The funeral was paid for by basketball star Shaquille O'Neal who said that he felt compelled to help Shania's family pay for the funeral after watching a TV show about the young girl. He commented, I wanted her to have a funeral that would be as beautiful as she was.